Hi, this is Elizabeth Egan. I am a chemistry teacher at Madison Park Technical Vocational High School in Boston. And in this screencast, I am going to talk about information for BPS administrators as it pertains to science safety. So the purpose of this video is to um, inform school leaders of their responsibilities for science safety at, at the school, um, to introduce you to the district's science safety plan, and to suggest ideas for how to support your science teachers to make sure they're doing the best they can do. So one of the largest responsibilities as a school leader is to make sure the permitting process happens annually. So this process um, involves a permit application that's submitted to the Boston Fire Department for a permit so that as a school, we can have the chemicals that we have to aid in our teaching and in the students' learning. Um, and the reason the Boston Fire Department cares so much about what chemicals we have is because if there ever were an emergency and they are entering the building, um, it is important for them to know what they're walking into, what potential hazards could be present in the building to ensure their own safety, um, and also to ensure the safety of everybody in the building all of the students and teachers and faculty and other support staff. So while this is the responsibility of the school leader, um, you can ask teachers for assistance. Chemistry teachers in particular will know what chemicals are present in the supply area and might have a, a, a good operation of the inventory system that we use as a district. It's called Chemventory. And the permit, um, application uh, is a is a spreadsheet that can be generated from Chemventory. For more information about the exact permitting process and how to complete all of this, there is a screencast that was created by Scott Blicky, and I will put the link to that screencast in the um, in the section below this video. You can also find find it on the BPS Science Weebly in the science safety section. So this permit needs to be completed by November 1st um, of each year, and it does take some time to accomplish. So allow yourself time, allow your teachers time to make sure that this important step um, happens. So someone that might be a great help for this responsibility and other responsibilities as the school leader is a science safety coordinator. So each each building should have a science safety coordinator, typically a teacher. Um, they can help with the permitting process. They can make sure that the electronic inventory is maintained, um, or if the electronic inventory has not been created at your school yet, they could help orchestrate that. That is a very time consuming task, so just make sure they have the, the time in their schedule to make that happen. Um, your science safety coordinator could make sure, help make sure that chemicals are stored properly. It's obviously the responsibility of all of the teachers using the chemicals, but it's good to have somebody overseeing um, and making sure that the correct storage um, is happening. Uh, the science safety coordinator coordinator could also do the monthly inspections of fire extinguishers, safety showers, and eye washes, and to, they could oversee the hazardous waste collection and removal, making sure that the right chemicals are put in the right locations and that when containers are full, um, the correct people are contacted so that that hazardous waste can be removed from the school. So again, all of these responsibilities are pretty time consuming, so the safety the science safety coordinator needs to have time in their day to accomplish these tasks. Um, as the school administrator, you can help to make sure that a science safety coordinator is assigned and help make sure that they have the time in their schedule for all of this to happen um, in a thorough manner. All science teachers beyond the, the science safety coordinator um, have other tasks that eat up time in their day. Um, things such as lab setup and cleanup take a, a large amount of time to get all of the chemicals um, into separate secondary containers so that they're accessible for the students so everything is safe in the lab. Um, and the cleanup, putting those chemicals back, making sure all of the waste is disposed of properly, etc. Those are just added um, things on top of the, the lesson planning, the planning for the lab. Um, uh, and all of that, just something to be aware of that um, that your science teachers might be doing that that uh, ends up taking a, a great 
deal of time, a good amount of time. And obviously we want science teachers to be doing as many labs as possible so that, you know, can balloon into lots of time. Um, it also takes time for science teachers to make sure that they're staying up to date about safety practices as they relate to each individual lab and in general about the classroom. Um, takes time to look up each of the chemicals and to see the hazards associated with them. And something else that science, all science teachers deal with day to day is out of pocket purchases of household items such as vinegar, baking soda, that sort of thing that they use in their science classroom but isn't always purchased through the, the department. Obviously, teachers of every subject purchase things out of pocket. So I'm, that's not to say that this is only a science teacher thing. It's just something else to be aware of so you can make sure that you're supporting your science teachers um, the best that you can. So again, as I said, how can you support your science teachers? Understand that many of these tasks take a substantial amount of time um, and try to allow for that time and lower barriers for completion and being understanding of um, the, the thought and the difficulty that goes into doing these tasks correctly. So uh, a really great resource for you as the headmaster or princi principal um, is the principal uh, safety checklist that's part of the science safety plan. You can find the science safety plan from the BPS Science Weebly. Um, currently it's in draft form, but once it's finalized, it will also be published here. And just to give you a sense of what that summary checklist of responsibilities looks like, um, this is its current form. The numbering is a little off because it's still uh, a draft, um, but it outlines all of the things that as a school administrator you are responsible for. And right next to this checklist is a checklist of what teachers or science safety coordinators are responsible for. Also very useful for you to know so you know what to expect um, from your teachers. So again, this is available from the BPS Science Weebly. So if you have any questions about anything outlined in this screencast or any other questions that may have arisen from watching this, um, please feel free to go to the BPS Science Weebly. Uh, tech check out the, the science safety section there, look at the science safety plan. And if your questions aren't immediately answered from that, um, email bpsscience at gmail.com and uh, from there your questions will be either answered or you'll be directed to someone who can answer your question. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.